the biggest thing that I like to talk to collectives about is the focus on building a community, right? So I think that you have the advertising and the marketing piece of it, but like the community aspect of membership growth are tied hand in hand, right? So you need something where people can connect to your message and want to be a part of it. You want to create that kind of that fear of missing out effect. Um, and that all comes down really to everything you do surrounding comes back to this community paywall. So collectives are, are split a little bit with major gifts and, and grassroots funding. Today, we're going to talk a lot about that grassroots funding because what we see with membership platforms is that collectives are seeing about a 40% to 60% of their revenue coming in through membership platforms and then the other bit being major gift funding. So I think there's a big piece of collectives that are focused on major gifts and fundraising and then kind of forget that community building piece that comes with it. So I would encourage you guys at all times to go outside of collegiate sports, look at other community building platforms, look at influencers, look at, I'm using this example of a family that travels. So they created this, this page here that's called the bucket list friends. And with access to that, you get travel deals, you get podcasts specific to the bucket list friends, you get special gifts. Um, and that's really the, the crooks of creating a community is, is getting access to, in our case, it's the athletes, but there's other examples out there where it's, um, families, travel deals. Those are the types of places that you can learn a lot from, um, rather than just kind of this insular brand of like, all right, what are other collectives doing? Let's expand outside of that. What are other community building platforms doing?